Imagine you have 10 minutes and you have to plow this entire field in 10 minutes. To do this, what you have is a tractor and this tractor is the fastest and most powerful tractor ever built on earth. And this tractor has a record that in 10 minutes, it cannot plow more than this small portion of the field. Whatever you can try to do, this tractor cannot plow more than this small portion of the field in 10 minutes. And this field is almost six times of the small portion which this tractor can plow. Do you think this one single tractor in 10 minutes can plow this whole field? It is impossible for it. But what if we take five more tractors, total six tractors, and for 10 minutes, start these six tractors simultaneously to plow just their small portion of the field. Now, do you think this whole field can be plowed in 10 minutes? Yes, you're right. We can plow this field in 10 minutes with these six tractors. This is called distributed processing. Where we distributed the processing that is plowing of this whole field in 10 minutes among six tractors to work simultaneously on their respective small portions of field which they can easily plow in 10 minutes to finally achieve the target of plowing this whole field in 10 minutes. Now let's look at what is distributed data processing. Suppose in India, we want to find the top five richest Indians. We have the data of every person in India, including their name, age, phone number, address. But what we need is their net worth because that tells us who is the richest person in India. So net worth is the most important column for us. We have this data in files and the size of this data is one terabyte. To get this detail out of this data, we have a laptop with one terabyte of hard disk and the fastest processor available in the market as of date. Our data is one terabyte and this fastest processor has a record that it can process one terabyte in 10 minutes. Whatever you try to do, it needs 10 minutes to process this one terabyte and it cannot process more than one terabyte in 10 minutes. Well, that's good for us because our data size is one terabyte. To find the top five richest Indians, we load this data into this laptop's hard drive and we run a SQL query. And after 10 minutes, we get back our results of the top five richest Indians. But the problem arises when instead of India, we now want to find this info for entire Asia. That is, we want to find the top five richest Asians now. Asia data is now six terabytes, which is six times the data of India. That volume has increased now. And our goal is still to find the top five richest Asians in 10 minutes only. And to do this, we have the same laptop, which has one terabyte of hard disk and the fastest processor. But our data is six times of one terabyte, which is six terabytes. Well, that's not a problem because we can just increase the hard disk capacity by adding another hard disk and increase it to six terabytes. But what about this fastest processor? This is the fastest processor in the market. And it has a record that in 10 minutes, it can process maximum one terabyte of data. Do you think this one machine can process the six terabytes in 10 minutes? It is impossible for it. Remember our field plowing problem? Think of each portion of this field as one terabyte of data. And each tractor as a laptop or a machine. Each machine can process one terabyte of data in 10 minutes. So why not we start these machines simultaneously for 10 minutes? And after 10 minutes, we'll have the top five richest Asians. This is called distributed data processing, where we distribute the processing of data among different machines to work simultaneously to achieve the goal of processing large amount of data in less time. Let's look at how this is practically achieved. So we'll take our six machines and connect them over the network. And we'll distribute 
the different portions of Asia data to these six machines. Like one machine will work on India data, other one will work on China. Similarly, third machine will work on Japan, Thailand, Singapore, Burma, and countries. And the, similarly, the other three machines of this group will work on other different countries of Asia. And this is called distributed data processing. And this group of machines is called a cluster. But wait, we have a problem here. We want to find the top five richest Asians, but each of these machines are working on their respective countries. Who is going to tell us who are the top five richest Asians? This is exactly where the master helps. A master is a machine which will take the data from each of these machines, which was processed at different countries level. And the master will calculate the top five richest people at Asia continent level. And this is called master slave architecture, where we have a master and other workers to do the distributed data processing. But this is not just the only architecture which distributed data processing offers to us, because there is one more where one of the machine of this cluster will take the responsibility of a master. It will process the data of its respective country, but will also receive the data from all the different machines and process them to find out the top five richest Asians. And such an architecture of distributed data processing is called a masterless architecture. One of the very popular technology using this architecture is Cassandra. Data replication. First, let's understand what is replica. A replica is an exact copy of something. When you make a copy, that is also called a replica. And what is replication? It is an act of copying something. So in our distributed data cluster, one of the machine is storing the data of India. But what if this machine goes down? If it fails, we would entirely lose India's data. And some Indians who are amongst top five richest Asians would not be even counted and make it to the list of richest Asians. And that is not something we want. How about we store the copy of India data on two other machines? And this is called data replication. So what would actually happen is the master, which was reading the data of India from this machine, when this machine fails, the master would start reading the data of India from these two different machines. Replication factor. So we recently discussed about the replication process. Now replication factor is a measure of the number of copies we are storing of every data file. If you want to remember replication factor, just simply remember these three lines and you will never forget what replication factor is. It's the total number of copies of a data file stored on a cluster. Say we have a data file and we have three machines on our cluster. We store it on one of the node. Then we also make two more copies of this data file. So the total number of copies of this data file is three and that becomes the replication factor of this cluster. Simple. Now benefits of distributed data processing. We'll dive into three key benefits of distributed data processing. Let's start with the first one, which is the fast speed. To understand this benefit, let's imagine a world if there was just one machine and distributed data processing never ever existed. Just imagine that world. So remember our scenario where we were calculating the top five richest Asians? The data size of Asia, six terabyte, and we had just one machine. Well, for adjusting the data volume, that is the hard disk, we extended the hard disk to match six terabyte. We added another five terabytes to our hard disk. But what about this fastest processor? I mean, this is the fastest processor that any company could develop at this point of time. So how can we think about achieving the goal of finding the top five richest Asians from six terabyte in 10 minutes. 
कैन यू थिंक ऑफ इट लाइक इट इज जस्ट वन मशीन एंड इट हैज अ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग वन टेराबाइट इन टेन मिनट्स हाउ मच एवर यू कैन डू दैट इज द मैक्सिमम रिकॉर्ड सो हाउ कैन इट इवन प्रोसेस सिक्स टेराबाइट इन टेन मिनट्स जस्ट वन मशीन इट इज इम्पॉसिबल फॉर इट वेल इफ वी वॉन्ट टू प्रोसेस सिक्स टेराबाइट realistically it would take approximately 60 minutes for it i'm not saying that it would take complete 60 minutes it is possible that it would complete maybe in 50 minutes or 45 minutes but it is impossible for it to complete the processing of 6 terabytes to find the top 5 richest asians in just 10 minutes to solve this problem distributed data processing proved to be immensely helpful so what we did we joined six machines together over the network and formed a cluster and we started all of these machines the processing on all of these machines together to work on their respective chunk of data so what this gave us is one of the machine returned back the result in about 8 minutes then another machine a minute after returned back the results and 30 seconds later another machine returned and then about 30 seconds later these three machines returned back their result so this exactly helped us in achieving this goal of processing 6 terabyte in 10 minutes and this is the speed which distributed data processing offers which we would have never gained by using just one single machine let's look at the second benefit which is fault tolerance well first of all what is fault tolerance what is this term let's first understand the meaning of it Let's break this down into two terms, which is fault and tolerance. Fault means any failure. And tolerance is how much it can tolerate. How much anyone can tolerate is called tolerance. In distributed data processing terms, we are talking about the tolerance of the cluster. So, remember our replication we just discussed about. So it is a process of storing more copies of every data file. and that exactly is what offers fault tolerance to a distributed data processing technology so our india data which is stored on one of the node or machine when the machine goes down we still have two more copies of the same india data which the master would start reading from so this is what provides the fault tolerance to distributed data processing technology meaning whenever fault happens one of the machine goes down there is still two more copies of that data to tolerate the fault then comes one of the most important benefit of this technology which is scalability suppose now instead of asia uh, you want to find the top 5 richest people in the entire world well now the data volume has increased many times the data is no more just 6 terabytes and we know that these six machines cannot process the whole world's data they were good for processing asia's data but not for the whole world well not a problem because using the scalability feature we can add more machines to our cluster and scale it up and it is now capable of finding world's top 5 richest people and this is scalability is horizontal meaning you don't need to just increase the compute power of your processor or maybe adding just more memory no you're not doing that you're adding more nodes horizontally you need six nodes yes just have a cluster of six nodes you need more add more you have even more load to process add more keep on adding and you can create a cluster of even thousands of machines and remember you don't need to have all the machines of your cluster in one single area with the machines sitting close to each other as i just showed you you can have a cluster with machines distributed across different parts of the usa country and country is not just the limit you can have a cluster with its machines spread across the whole world and that's the scalability benefit which this technology offers to us now let's look at the technologies using distributed data processing first is apache spark 
It is world's most popular big data processing system, which offers several benefits. One of them being in-memory processing. I'll have a dedicated video on Apache Spark to explain it in simple terms, and I'll go into the details of different concepts of Spark, so you can check that out. Apache Kafka, which is a real-time streaming system. Google BigQuery, Hadoop, Amazon Redshift, which is AWS data warehousing solution, MongoDB, Apache Fling, Cassandra, another NoSQL solution, and Apache Storm. Well, this is a very small list of some of the technologies which uses distributed data processing, but there are a lot more technologies which utilize distributed data processing. Hi, I hope you found this video helpful because your learning and growth is the goal of this video. Thank you for watching.